Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean crime drama movie released in 2020, called, Innocence. A rising star lawyer tries to defend her mother against an accusation of poisoning. But instead of justice, she finds out a dark secret that changes her life forever. What shocking truth will she uncover? Let's find out together. The movie starts with the town's mayor, Chu, entering a house where a funeral party is being held. Mayor Chu sits with a group of men who thank him for all his hard work to bring prosperity to the town's people. They all drink some Korean rice wine. Mayor Chu comes to say his condolences to the wife of the deceased, Wa, but she's just absent-mindedly singing a song. The late man's sister scolds Wa and asks why her hotshot daughter in Seoul isn't coming to her father's funeral. Not accepting her daughter being disrespected, Wa goes rampage on her, with guests trying to separate the two. Suddenly, the guests who drank the rice wine became ill, including the mayor. Something is wrong with the rice wine. Meanwhile, in Seoul, Wa's daughter, Jungin, is defending a person in court. She successfully wins the case and is congratulated by her boss in the law firm. Jungin is the ace lawyer in the firm. She then sees the news on TV about a tragedy in Dercheon where people got poisoned by a pesticide spiked rice wine at a funeral. Jungin notices the house to be her family's, and her mother is arrested as a suspect, so she decides to leave immediately. While driving, she calls a detective she knows and asks him to dig for information about the case. We see a flashback of Jungin as a teenager receiving a recommendation letter to Seoul National University. Her father, Te, disagrees and rips the letter, saying that she can only leave the house and do what she wants when he's dead. For some reason her father is harsh to her, often beating her while at the same time won't let her go. Feeling unappreciated at home, she leaves her home and never returns. Jungin visits her mother in jail, who doesn't seem to recognize her daughter. Instead of revealing her identity, Jungin plays along and asks if Wa remembers anything from the funeral, but she doesn't even remember that there was a funeral. She doesn't even realize she's in jail, and keeps saying she needs to care for his son and pees herself. Apparently, Wa has dementia. Jungin goes to her house, which is now a crime scene. She looks around and photographs some evidence sneakily. Her younger brother, Su, is running around chasing a cat and ruining the crime scene. The police officer catches him and slaps him before Jungin stops him. Su slaps the guy instead, we can see that he has autism. We move on to Wa's hearing. A witness says he saw Wa and Su pouring rice wine with many pesticide bottles near them. Wa gets upset, saying her son has nothing to do with it. Her lawyers reveal that she signed a confession in prison. Outside court, the people gather to harass Wa. Jungin's aunt greets her with the lawyer. She criticizes the lawyer's poor method in court in defending her mother, and he gets upset, leaving the case. Jungin then pleads to take over the case to her boss. With her boss approval, she can focus on her mother's case. She goes around town to know more about the incident, but gets harassed instead. Her uncle mentions the town folks always being mean to their family due to a mining fraud her father did long ago. While driving, she sees a guy breaking into their house, but is gone when she checks it out. She tells the detective from earlier that she thinks her mother is being framed, and she only signed the confession because she's afraid Sue will be charged too. He gives her the information about the case. She presents her findings in court, that the police tricked Wa to sign the confession, they tampered with the evidence, and accuses the witness for lying. The prosecutor denies them, but she shows her a photo of the prosecutor, detective, and witness of the case hanging out together as they are all friends. The detective and witness's fathers are also victims of the poisoning. Jungin then asks for Wat to receive medical attention so they can properly find out the truth. The three men are scolded by Mayor Chu for letting Wa be released, and asks them to look into something. Wa is getting a medical examination and the doctor says she should be out on medical release. She then sees the doctor talking to a man, and when she comes to check on her mother, she is gone. On CCTV, we see Wa walking out of the hospital. They then find her sitting by the side of the lake, saying that this is the place for something. The police then take her, saying that the court orders to take her back. Suddenly, a police officer greets Jungin, saying that he's her old classmate named Yoon. He invites her to talk at the police station. He shows her footage of her mother coming into the station soaking wet three months ago, telling him that her husband is a killer, and that Mayor Chu and his friends are in on it. She left home for a few days after that, before they found her near the lake like tonight. 
Jungin says this whole case is weird, and that her mother is close to the victim so she wouldn't hurt him intentionally. She asks Yoon if there's anything that happened in the village, and he says a casino that's going to be built there is causing a ruckus. Apparently, Maya Chu is giving the casino owners a permit if they pay him well so he can fund his campaign to run for governor. The prosecutor comes in to report that Was medical release will be dismissed today. Jungin's aunt says they didn't hire the previous lawyer, so she goes to his office to investigate. He says that he doesn't remember who asked him to take the case. She asks if the casino has something to do with it, but he avoids the question and says he's busy. When Jungin leaves, he calls the mayor to report their meeting, but apparently she is recording the call with her phone that she pretends to have forgotten. She connects the clues to Mayor Chu, and goes to the family house to look for more clues. There, she spots footprints and is ambushed by a man hiding in the house. They fight and she gets knocked out, but his lighter drops. She brings it to the detective to look for fingerprints, as he could be the suspect. The detective dismisses her, saying that he's out of the case because of her. Instead, she asks Yoon to investigate the footprints, and Yoon promises to find him. Jungin and Su attend one of the victim's funerals. There, a man approaches Su, taking his phone and trying to transfer the data when Jungin comes. He introduces himself as the new prosecutor for Was case. Outside the building, they get beaten up by a few guys that try to harass them to drop the case. The next day in court, the prosecutor shows new evidence that implies Wo was preparing for the poisoning, but Jungin denies it, saying one of the victims is close to Wo so she has no motive. The prosecutor calls Su to be a witness, Jungin denies as he has severe autism, but the judge allows it. At home, Jungin watches a video of Maya Chu coming to their house before her mother gets sick. Su says he's a bad man, and then she teaches him on how to be a witness, telling him to follow her cue in court. In court, Su is being questioned if he's the only one who poured the rice wine like shown in the CCTV footage. He says he doesn't know. The prosecutor blocks the cues from Jungin, so Su finally answers yes before panicking. Wa also panics, screaming he is innocent and that she did the poisoning before she passes out and gets taken by an ambulance. Meanwhile, Su is taken by the police due to his confession. Jungin threatens the prosecutor and promises she'll prove their innocence. She starts taking note of her mother's dementia progression and sees that the mayor is running for governor. In a picture of the casino's groundbreaking, she sees familiar faces from the case, like the detective and the prosecutor, implying they are all working together. She reveals this to Yoon, while wondering what the mayor was doing coming to their house often to see her mother. She tells Yoon to look into the intruder's identity while she's going to visit Wo. Su is being interrogated by the police, but doesn't answer anything. Meanwhile in prison, War is being told by the prosecutor to pretend that she is the killer in order to keep Su safe. When she meets with Jungin, she repeatedly says that she is indeed the killer, but Jungin knows she's being told to do so. Jungin asks her if she knows who Jungin is, but she says she doesn't and instead keeps asking about Su, causing Jungin to be very upset and leaves. While being carried out, Wa finally realizes that she's her daughter and wants to see her again. Later, Jungin gets a call from Yoon telling her to come to the station as he found her intruder. The intruder is being questioned by the police while the prosecutor suddenly appears to take the home invasion case as it relates to Wo's case. She meets with Yoon outside, and they see the police immediately releasing the intruder. They follow the intruder's car and see that they are trying to take him out of town. Yoon says he will follow the intruder while Jungin follows the van. He finds out that the intruder is getting on a bus to Mokpo. Jungin follows the van until morning until they end up in a construction site. When the driver walks away, she searches the van for clues, finding a map with highlighted regions and the names of her father's group of friends on it. In her family home, she finds a broken phone and also a photo that has been ripped to pieces. She hires someone to try fixing the phone, then puts back the pieces of the photo together, revealing it to be a wedding picture of her mother with a man named Du. She goes to one of her father's friends, asking who Wu is. He says Wu is the son of the quarry boss the group of friends were working for. He reveals that they all planned to kill him while he was fishing at the lake, and after that Jungin's father replaces him to become the quarry manager. Wa, who used to be his wife, then started living with him without knowing anything. After the conversation, Jungin receives a call from Yoon saying the intruder was ordered by Bang, who was the witness of the case, to take something from the house. Maya Chu orders a hit on Jungin, so when she's driving home, she was almost hit by a truck, causing her to crash to the curb. She wakes up with Yoon next to her, then he gives her a map that the intruder gave him. 
It's the same map as the one Jungin found in the truck, but this time it has her father and Bang's name written on it. She has an idea, and tells Yoon to look into the truck that almost hit her. Land registration data proves her suspicion that her father's lands were recently transferred to Bang's father, who was one of the poisoning victims. She then brings the police to her house to collect clues and goes to the hospital to talk to Maya Chu. She indicates to him that she knows about the casino land's problems, and asks him to be their witness. He pretends to not know anything and disagrees to be a witness now. Jungin comes out and meets Yoon who says that the truck that almost hit her belongs to Bang's construction company. She then goes to her uncle to show him all the evidence, and he becomes a witness in court. He says that Jungin's father, Te, became his drinking buddy after he was shunned by the village. Te tells him a lot about how his group of friends betrayed him, with Maya Chu running for office as soon as Te gives up his campaign to be mayor. Apparently, Te always said that one day he will poison the men with pesticide. Jungin points out that the only victims of the poisoning were these men, and they are the only ones in the village who drink, everyone knows it. Jungin requests Maya Chu to become a witness. Maya Chu comes to court, and there, Jungin manages to prove that he had tricked her to sell his land in order to get much more money from the casino. She then also proves the group's conspiracy by calling the intruder as a witness, saying he'll get a position when the casino opens if he steals the map. The court takes a break and she gets the phone that was fixed. There, she sees Te saying that War is poisoning his food because she found out about their murder of U. Jungin confronts her about this, and she finally confesses to poisoning everyone, including Te. She says that she went to stay with him only to protect her and Wu's daughter, who is apparently Jungin. After hearing this, Jungin cries and apologizes to her mother. In the next hearing, Jungin manages to expose all of Maya Chu's schemes in a public hearing, including that the mining fraud was also his doing, causing the villagers to be upset at him. She then suggests that the culprit of the poisoning is actually Te, who asked Su to give them the rice wine at his funeral party. Jungin proves once more that her mother is incapable of murder because her dementia is so bad, she can't even remember her own daughter. With all the evidence, the court decides that War is not guilty. Jungin cleverly crafted a lie based on the irrefutable evidence to save her mom despite being actually guilty. The movie closes with Jungin and Was sitting together by the lake. Sometimes life hides a shocking truth somewhere deep in the past. Jungin's mother is a victim in this situation, but do you think Jungin's decision to cover the case and blame it on her dead stepfather is an ultimate justice? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you, next time.